I'm looking at my screen to see who's um, and greeting um, people that are here um, through the power of illusion. <laughs> I like using, I like video, not uh, not remote, you know. Um, <clears throat> So uh, I hope everyone can hear me remotely. I, th I think we're going to be improving our IT at some point because I think it's it's hard to hear for some people on video uh, when we're talking as question and answer or something like that. So we may be buying some new microphones or reevaluating our our IT and helping out our IT people. Thank you, Eli. You know, we do we do a lot with very little, really. You know, so, um, uh, but maybe every three or four years we have to upgrade our microphones because um, uh, the the interference, <laughs> the the dawn, they'd say in. Uh, Tibet, the beings. In other words, other other frequencies interfere if the microphones are not really good. Um, so, you know, we may have to really up it and have, um, you know, get those, you know, five hundred dollar microphones because I want everybody to participate, and I particularly want the people that are around the world to hear what we're doing. That's that's important. So when. Um, people physically move out of Sacramento, um, uh, you know, I don't want to feel like they're distant, right? So that's why uh, we're, uh, we're not a religion, really, Buddhism isn't quite a religion, but it is a lineage mandala, right? So <clears throat> that's why we do these meditations, which are really remembrances. We're remembering uh, the fantastic efforts of um, people and beings that uh, were able to tell us the truth, and we're repeating the truth, right? So the, the things we call prayers are things that the great teachers from Shakyamuni on down have said, so we're just getting together and repeating, <clears throat> and we're not forgetting, right? So... Um, Sometimes, uh, you know, I wonder how uh, how many of us will remember each other, like 10 years from now, if we're still on the planet, 20 years from now, you know? How will um, we stay in touch? That's really important, right? So uh, the lineage is like we, we remember uh, who we've been with. We don't forget. So when people... Um, move away or um, do other things, I don't forget them, right? So um, I like hearing from people too, like out of the blue, people will text and go, hey, can I meet? And I, oh, good, I haven't heard from you in years. Yeah, okay, great, you know, that's lineage, that's the mandala. So um, people think, oh, we're doing religion because we're doing what's called prayers, but actually we're just remembering who brought us all this. There's some people that, you know, really do celebrate, um, uh, you know, people in their lives. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe this is familiar. So not just death anniversaries, but we, we tell stories about, you know, used to the old school. I, I don't know if people do that anymore, you know, but growing up, I think I had a traditional upbringing and my grandfather would tell stories about you know, his grandfather, right, you know, and pass on these stories. A lot of times, since we're so psychologized in California, we're only remembering kind of the dysfunctional stories. But actually, there's probably a lot of good stories about, do you remember this when that happened? And, you know, so we're just keeping the story going. Uh, so I really appreciate. <laughs> and the topic for today is um, by Buddha families. So um, that's one of the tantric ways where we keep the story going, you see. <clears throat> the, um, 
Buddha Gotras, the five Buddha families, um, is uh, now a little bit ubiquitous on the internet. Um, um, Chagdan Trungpa Rinpoche put a lot of uh, emphasis on five Buddha families where um, some teachers haven't, right? Um, I think he was inspired to find a way to um, communicate uh, the sense of mandala and sangha and uh, friendship and lineage, and uh, he thought this would be a very useful way of doing it. Um, it's talked about in different tantras, but um, uh, the tantra that goes into it most is um, uh, the Samaja Tantra, <clears throat> uh, sometimes translated uh, the secret assembly, like that. <laughs> Sounds great, doesn't it? So uh, it's uh, very detailed and um, uh, you know, has over 30, 32, you know, kind of devas and manifestations. Um, uh, if, <laughs> if we invited Jada Rinpoche to give Paramanan Guru Samaja, um, you better not say that you'll do 100 every day, <laughs> because then you'd, you'd have you'd have to do all 32, you know, or you say, okay, well, I'll do three of the root, short root mantra every day, <laughs> like that. So, Guru Samaj is like a big family, right? Uh, so, when we think Buddha families, we have to think families. Usually in the West now, you know, we think, oh, families um, are the source of dysfunction, which of course they are, but they're also the source of our language and uh, where we came from and so forth. So when we say Buddha families, we mean awake, awake families, right? So um, we're positive about families in that way. This is different than saying we're all um, uh, individuals um, coming together to um, just practice because we want to hear the Dharma. That would be kind of, kind of Prateka Buddha style, right? Prateka Buddhas are ones that um, are kind of uh, lone, lone Buddhas that um, meditate on um, uh, 12 links and then become enlightened, but they don't like hanging out, you know, like that. But um, occasionally we have some Prateka Buddhas here. They come for a while and then they leave, right? Because it's difficult being around others, right? However, in our tradition, um, uh, we we really can't become Buddha by ourselves, right? We're going to turn the light switch on from our side, but um, we uh, find out that there are other people in the room, right? So the correct way to practice the five Buddha families is not going over all the details of the different Buddhas, the colors, the um, hand mudras, and so forth. And there's lots of schema because it's describing the world. But um, think of uh, just or see the person that you're sitting next to and like uh, be thinking, um, it's necessary for this person to be awake and free for me to be awake and free. So you're thinking, I can't be free until my neighbor is free. In fact, I can't be free until we're all free, right? We have to take everybody with us. No one, you know, no one can't just say, well, I, I want to be, I want to be liberated by myself would be totally individual liberation, Pajika Buddha, or just what would sometimes we'd say arhat. But from the Buddha family point of view, the mandala point of view, um, uh, we're, we're all going. It's kind of scary, right? Don't you think? I don't know. So you have to think, like, really? And how this, I, I have, this person has to come with me? Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> so there's this intimate relationship that even uh, if you don't totally like them, um, then uh, uh, then they're coming with you anyway. <laughs> So, um, <clears throat> one time I did ask, you know, because therapy and all that, being therapist, you know, asked my teacher, like, do you like me? <laughs> what do you think? He said, no. <laughs> uh. It doesn't even make sense in Tibetan, you know, like, do you? You like me, you know, kind of. Uh, it's very strong that we want our teacher to like us, you know. Um, uh, and it is nice to be liked, you know, but you don't have to be liked all the time, right? It's in the family, in families, we don't have to like each other all the time, but we do want to love each other. So that part's clear. Technically, the five Buddha families. Um, are the um, meditatively they are the enlightened qualities of the five skandhas. So the Buddha um, had some very important things to say about who we who we are and what reality is. Right, basic reality is uh, interdependence, interdependent arising and passing away. Um, relativity. <clears throat> and of course, because everything is completely relative, it's empty of existing from its own side. Yeah. But just describing interdependence and relativity by itself doesn't totally help us all the time because um, we could say, well, but what about how do I manage my self, my inner world, right? <clears throat> Because even though we can have a view of emptiness or relativity, um, we still can be very uh, blind to not applying that to ourselves. So the Buddha said, when you apply relativity or emptiness to ourselves, then you realize that who we are are these five aggregates or heaps or collections. We're not a unitary self. Mm. A kind way of saying it uh, is like we're a system, we're um, an ecological mind-body system, we're a gathering, right? And of course, in uh, Vajrayana, we say we're a mandala. But I think, you know, Buddha really wanted to, and initially, uh, and we still do, want to remind people like, oh, you know, you think you're really important, but actually you're just five skandhas, right? <laughs> it's very easy to um, forget that, particularly when we're feeling great and when people are either praising us or dissing us, you know, then we feel very solid. So uh, last month, you know, I got pretty sick and um, I became really aware of, like, I'm just these interdependent um, heaps. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually my meditation was really good. I, I felt like shit, but um, actually, from the um, inside point of view, it's uh, actually in some ways better to be meditating when when we're not feeling well. Because when we're feeling well, we we tend to feel a little bit more like, hey, I'm omnipotent or I'm super solid or something like that. So uh, in some ways, it's uh, easier to um, see into the uh, nature of our um, being as five skandhas when we're not feeling that well because then feel things do feel kind of like falling apart and just kind of heaps don't you think we can have a discussion in a minute <clears throat> but from a tantra point of view um the the skandhas are um a limited way of seeing who we are actually the five skandhas are awake and pristine and so we call them the five buddhas but they all work together, right? We need all the skandhas working together, don't we? Hmm. We can't get rid of one, can we? This form, 
me something, some appearance, this uh, feeling in this sense, you know, our judgment, our uh, aversion, our attraction, um, this perception, we have to notice things, this a big thing called um, formations, which is all the emotions and different um, realities. And then finally, this consciousness, we, we need all of that, right? <clears throat> so from a contract point of view, the five skandhas are seen or developed or matured into the five Buddha families. And the Buddha families, um, well, they all need each other <laughs> like that. Just like everybody in this room does. <clears throat> Sometimes we say there's like a uh, sixth um, Vajrasattva, you know. The, so there's the five Buddha families and the Buddha in the center, but then the, all together we see sometimes um, Vajrasattva. So um, that's why it's uh, a major part of my practice is Vajrasattva for practice. And then I'm um, really glad that um, I think Dirk is continuing to lead Vajrasattva for meditation. Is that so? Yes. Hope so. Yeah. Anybody listening into Vajrasattva here? Oh, we need a few Vajrasattva people. <clears throat> What's it like to feel like totally coordinated? What is it like to feel like, oh, I'm loving my family and um, all the members of the family around the table are contributing something wonderful and loving and nice? That's Vajrasattva. Yeah. So we have we have two Vajrasattvas actually. Um, and the uh, tankas here in the gompa, we have both given by Geshe Sewang, our friend who will be coming this fall. One's uh, father, mother, another, and with consort we'd say, and one's solo. So um, we we have a lot of vajrasattva here. It's important. What's it like to totally feel integrated? Um, what's it like to like really um, enjoy um, your family gathering? Vajrasattva. It's interesting, like that. So there's a there's a time when we're sitting around our family table or, you know, holidays where you think, well, that person's doing this and that's annoying, or that person's doing something else. But there there's probably um everybody has that experience, uh, maybe more when they're young or something, that like, wow, I belong here and Everyone's kind of interesting and supportive. If we didn't have that experience growing up, the um, idea of the Sangha here, and um, my job is so you get to have that experience. Wow, it's, everyone's really interesting and kind of good looking, and <laughs> they have interesting things to say, and it's great being here, you know? like that, and all the different activities, like there are people that are very active, karma family, and then there are people that are very smart, the Vajra family, and then there are people that are really confident, the Ratna family, and then there are people that are really active, the karma family, and then the people that are really spacious, and it all works together, it's all coordinated, and Vajrasattva, like that. So, like it, it, this, everything feels really like fully integrated mandala, fully integrated situation. So you don't have to uh, improve anything. <clears throat> sometimes it's kind of like those. Uh, uh, sometimes I don't know. Like you're Italian or French movies. I can't remember now. Uh, who I'm referring to, but they kind of end with everyone having like a big meal together. Do you know what, what I mean? You know, there's a few like that, right? You know, they're out in the olive garden or other, you know. Um, it was a Swedish movie I saw recently. You know, everyone's, and, you, and it's just so satisfying, right? <clears throat> so that experience um, where, uh, we're all together and enjoying uh, 
our life um, is um, ritualized in the, what's called the uh, Gana Chakra um, circle um, uh, that we get together and eat and enjoy the senses in Tibetan soak, we'd say. So we have that a little bit every um, Sunday afterwards, we have a meal together, right? Um, when it's ritualized, um, then you all visualize yourself as like uh, devas, of course, and uh, sacred mandala, but you're probably doing that already, right? So when people are mature enough and we have some chance, then we'll do some uh, kind of chakra soak kind of offerings. Um, but you have to have, you know, pure vision to do that, right? So it's not ordinary meal. It's um, celebrating your family without wishing anybody would be different or you would be somewhere else. Does that sound like an experience we've ever had? That would be nice. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, um, the experience of Ajusafa, the coordinated experience of on the family feeling is you're both free and connected at the same time. That's so important. Usually they're split, right? We're connected, but we're kind of stuck. Or we're free, but we're feeling kind of dissociated, isolated. So it's an incredible experience. You're totally supported and totally free at the same time. No. So the um, universe... Um, responds to you and you respond to the universe. Very beautiful feeling, Vajrasattva. <clears throat> so it's uh, uh, necessary that we um, uh, do these kind of lineage mandala behaviors um, so that um, we move from the the biological family identification, whether it's positive or negative, to uh, a maybe we'd say now chosen family, something like that. You know, <clears throat> there's a, um, I didn't read the book because I, <laughs> I don't, I haven't read much Charles Dickens except um, uh, a few in college, but there's one of his lesser known book called Nicholas Nickleby, right? <laughs> and uh, he goes on these adventures and his biological family, his parents died and then he got screwed over by his uncle. Dickens is always very good at delineating these good and evil characters, um, but uh, runs into a, um, some artists and some playwrights and different characters along the way. And, um, you know, finally has a chosen family, right? So um, we uh, we say sometimes Dharma is like our chosen family, even if we've taken rebirth consciously to be here. We said, okay, I'm choosing you. So today you should be looking at each other like, I chose to be here today and chose to be looking at you, you know? Um, so that's the Buddha families. So one way to look at Buddha families is more kind of technical, or is that this sort of family means this, and this is that, but um, I want people to get the idea of what an enlightened family looks like. <clears throat> Within that, then uh, it is useful to uh, recognize that um, like Vajra folks and Padma folks have different approaches, right? <clears throat> and to recognize what are the particular Buddha qualities that uh, each of the subfamilies have, right? So a big problem uh, when we're stuck in ourselves is we're thinking everyone should think like us, right? Unless you don't like yourself, maybe you think, well, they shouldn't be thinking like me, I don't know, but we, we generally are not good with diversity. We're very kind of mono-cultured, mono-self, like, because we get faster, like, I don't get why you're not getting what I'm saying. What's wrong with you, right? It's so much like that. So uh, the Buddha families are arranged, so they're a little bit opposite. So 
Padma folks of the West um, and like touchy feely and juicy kinds of things. <laughs> Appreciative discrimination or very, you know, uh, connective. Um, and Vajra folks also, Vajra folks a little bit opposite because they're connecting through um, their uh, intellect or sometimes anger. They're noticing like, okay, well, what's the structure, right? Padma folks are, you know, I don't, we don't need a structure. We're just saying hi and giving a hug. And Vajra folks are going to say, well, I want to know who, who I'm hugging before I hug them, you know? That makes sense, right? <clears throat> Then Ratna people, the jewel world, yellow, um, confidence, richness. They're, they're kind of very, um, I know I'm talking like it's kind of they, but the quality is, is very confident, sometimes arrogant, but very rich. So we have a lot of Ratna here, you know, very, feels rich, doesn't it? <clears throat> but the kind of the opposite is the karma family. You know, Rodnas would show up and go, God, this is really good. You know? I'm just going to kind of hang out here. The karma family is going to go, yeah, but we got to buy some new chairs. I led with a very karma family thing, like, yeah, we're going to need some new microphones. Yeah. So, the Tantra practice is how we coordinate, um, amplify, or balance these different qualities of the different Buddha families so we can uh, you know, be uh, a Vajrasattva, indestructible being. Wouldn't that be nice? Mm. On a very simple level, the uh, um, when we say family, it's kind of a uh, friendship family, right? Because it's a friendship model. So who are your deep friends? It's your chosen family. Um, who will you stay in touch with as your deep friend? I wonder among the people here, who will stay in touch with who? I wonder about that, you know? So, um, like if somebody... You know, is it kind of like a work setting? A lot of times they're very strong work friendships. And then, you know, people change jobs and they just disappear, right? You feel like, oh, that person was really neat and maybe get together once in a while. But who who do you think here, who would you, who do you think would stay with you, stay with touch with you ongoing? And who do you think you would stay in touch with, right? Like that. That's very difficult, right? <laughs> because, of course, you know, like um, for for people that have been like married and divorced, you know, like, well, yeah, I said we'd always be together, <laughs> and then you're not, right? Difficult, right? Even when you put a lot of energy into things, it's difficult to stay connected, don't you think? Or we say somebody changed, so I don't want to be connected with it, or I changed. And so uh, the aspect, though, of Vajrasattva is that there's the connection going on no matter what. But on a practical level, if you want to, um, or Vajrayana level, if you want to know, like, oh, understand the Buddha families, like, th these are the people, dead or alive, um, magical or not, you know, I'm just totally staying in contact like that. And that's difficult. I know that's difficult. I think, or maybe it's really easy. We can have a discussion in a minute. <clears throat> Another way to think about it is right now in the room or who um, was in our work or mandala or home, who do we really depend upon, right? That's your Vajra family, you know, your your Vajrasattva world, who's like, you know, really going to show up, right? I talk about that a lot with people when when they're sick or they've been in the hospital and they go, wow, this 
person showed up, right? Or I find myself showing up for them. It's it's profound, right? <clears throat> it's also kind of sad if we go, yeah, well, I'm not going to show up for them. <laughs> we have to be honest sometimes, like, if somebody go, yeah, so and so is going through this or going through that, and you go, yeah, well, it's a bummer, but I'm not showing up for them, right? So we always think in Vajrayana both who would show up and who we wouldn't show up for, right? It's interesting. Who would we go visit in the hospital and who wouldn't we visit in the hospital? I tend to be biased. I actually like visiting people in the hospital, but I'm sure there's times where, you know, I would say I'm on retreat or I'm not in town, so I'm not going to drive and see you or something, right? But it's good to be thinking, who, who would we want to show up, right? It's interesting, like that. Hmm. So I'll talk more about the Buddha families going forward this year, because um, it's very important to understand mandala and Buddha families and how they coordinate together, because Vajrayana Sanghas are very different than other forms of Buddhism, Vajrayana Sanghas, where we're looking for complexity. I know it's kind of trippy, but you know, we are trying as much to have as much diversity, equity, and inclusion as possible, right? So there's, there's a variety of different images, and there's a variety of different practices, and um, I would like to see as much variety as people as possible, right? Like that. Otherwise, um, we don't have a Buddha family. We don't have a Buddha mandala. We have what you've heard me say before is Dharma club. Dharma clubs just where, you know, sometimes I want Dharma club. You know, Dharma clubs really. I just, I just want the nice people that I think are beautiful and intelligent or. I mean, there could be a Dharma club of everyone that's angry, too, this angry song is. <laughs> well, I don't want to be in this uplifting, beautiful song. I want to be all, I want to be in a group that's basically depressed. You know, that would, whatever it is, is kind of, <laughs> yeah, I think it's like that. Like, I listen to some teachers, um, and I'm thinking, uh, not just uh, Western, like, wow, they're kind of actually, um, dysthymic, you know, it's kind of depressing, you know, like that. And I wonder, maybe they are depressed. So, can you be depressed and be a teacher at the same time? Yeah, probably. I think so. If you recognize it, if you don't recognize it, then there's a problem. If you go, yeah, I'm kind of depressed and okay, but the Dharma Club is where you just really want a monoculture. You want everybody kind of agreeing with you and not being you know, basically cult, don't you think, like that, you know. But we're, um, we want to be, um, uh, like, uh, there was a card I had in my office. Um, there was an artist, she kind of graphic artist, funny. So they had this kind of person and the card, and I had a mug, too. It said, let's put the fun back in dysfunction. Yeah, there was an artist that did those. You know, she was very popular in the 80s and 90s. So maybe we can have a short discussion. Mm -hmm. And then we need a mic. So I've heard from a few people that it's, it's hard for um, the people on Zoom to hear with the... Uh, um, the handheld mic. Is that true? Anybody uh, in video land want to testify to that? I could like, I don't know, we can um, walk around. Yeah. Uh, it, it's hard if people do not hold the mic like this. You hold it like this, yeah. like this, or it, like this. You have to speak like this. It's very directional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very directional. I had a suggestion at one point to have kind of uh also an omnidirectional mic, maybe we can talk about that, you know, but yeah. Mm. 
Any question? Oh, good. We get to eat early. No, I don't know. I mean, it's a comment time, too. Generally, you don't need to always have questions, right? Thank you, Loma. Um, for the record, I think the mic isn't the problem. I think it just, we need to remind people how to use it. Mm. Like, like that instruction that Dylan just gave. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good point. Okay. Um, what I thought about during your talk was um, trends in society. Because I think right now there's been a trend like with lots of people working from home, lots of people like really cultivating their circles to be like, these are the only people I talk to because they never make me feel bad. They never challenge me on my opinions. And it sound, like thinking of it from that perspective, that sounds very opposite of what was described as part of um, a community that loves around these these difficult attributes and i guess i wonder um do you think maybe like at some point there might be like a rubber band snap where people are like okay i'm tired of like surrounding myself with people that think just like me i'm going to open it up a little bit to to differing viewpoints thank you yeah, we do get, we, you know, I think a lot of, of come to Dharma and Sanghas because there's a sense where we're feeling like we're suffocating ourselves. Um, and then, but of course, sometimes we can, you know, suffocate ourselves in our community too. So the, the metaphor that I, <laughs> I'm fond of is um, saying that we have to have a balance of uh, um, relative and absolute. And that means that we're always going to have a personal narrative and a personal identity, right? It's just uh, personal identity most of the time needs to be here instead of here. So, but sometimes under pain, we, you know, bring it back, you know, because we join a sangha and then doesn't meet our needs or someone's mean or the teacher is a jerk or something. And then, you know, with, we do have to get out. But generally when we're talking about enlightened mandala, you know, we're not cutting anything off. We're just, you know, the the personal self is like a hand that can move around, but doesn't get in the way of um, the basic uh, wakefulness like that. It operates to the benefit of wakefulness. Um, but samsara is like a rubber band, yeah. So it will stretch, but then... Uh, if, it'll snap back and if we don't take it off our wrist, right? But I, I think I I definitely found Dharma after kind of um, uh, finding my family a little suffocating like that. I mean, they were crazy. <laughs> In a certain kind of East Coast way. Mm. <laughs> So we do have a question from Dirk. If Dirk, you'd like to unmute yourself. Well, Lama, thank you. I just have kind of a dumb technical question, really. Yeah. Uh, is uh, some I know some uh, mostly I've been taught that Vajrasattva was the sixth, like the sixth Buddha family in a way. But is does Vajradhara sometimes also look that way at that way? Yeah. So, um. Yeah, in you know these terms, and first translation score. Lots of times, you know, we're talking about Vajrasattva, um, uh, and the Sarma new translation schools. Lots of times, we're talking about Vajradhara. Um, my own teacher would use them interchangeably, like that. Actually, um, so uh, yeah. Um, Generally, I, I'm I'm thinking about Vajrasattva maybe from the um, old translation schools. <laughs> I like calling it the new trans, the first translation school, like that. 
the translations that were made when, um, you know, Padmasambhava and Bharatsana and so forth, at Sami, like that. But uh, there is something uh, about the, there's this quality of sixth, which um, is the, um, the, um, uh, not separate, not different, not the same, you know, all those interesting logical things, but it's the 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 full integrated experience. And um if we're talking from tantric point of view, um where it has some form, then lots of times I like to think Vajrasattva like that. But sometimes uh, you know, we we would say Vajrada, depending upon your you know, Gurimshe or Tsongkhapa or Macha get you know, different um, historic beings too could um, uh, have that role. But um, generally, like like Samatabhadra or Vajrasattva, it's kept on a very um, uh, transpersonal level, right? So generally, um, uh, we wouldn't say. Uh, like Vajrasattva or Vajradhara um, or Samatabhadra, Samatabhadri don't don't have a um, a personal narrative the way um, Shakyamuni would or um, Yeshitsogya and so forth. So like that. So it's interesting. So like if I talk to people and I say, uh, "Tell me about your family." That's always kind of a trick question, right? Why is it tricky? Well, um, different levels, because of course, when you, I say to somebody, tell me about your family, they're going to be telling about their version of family, right? <laughs> Which means they're talking about themselves. Um, so a lot of times people say, well, I've been talking about you know this and that, or things that work and I now I'm gonna talk about myself. And so I'm always gonna I sometimes if I'm cheeky, which is frequent, I'll say, well, actually you've been talking about yourself the whole time. Different perspectives, right? But um so it's uh in our tradition, it's possible to present uh the whole thing all at once, you see. So that's that's our big proclamation, the big lion's roar, is we can present the whole thing all at once. We're usually, of course, um, we're just presenting, you know, one perspective. Even if it could be kind of admitting our bias, like, um, uh, so I could say, well, I, my bias is I'm just white kid from the suburbs of New York, so that's my context, so that's not changing. But also, uh, I like think if when when I meet the next alien and ask about humanity, I say, "Well, I also represent humanity, right? I'm a perfect example, like that." So we can take that Vajrasattva kind of uh, uh, standpoint, which is, of course, the Zogchen standpoint. Is that helpful? I don't know. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much, Lima. And enough about me. Uh, let's talk. <laughs> How did you like my latest film? <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> you know. Hi, Lama. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I thought I heard you say um, there was a relationship between the five skandhas and the five Buddha families, and I was hoping you could help me understand that connection a bit more. So, um, the skandhas are really uh uh there's they have kind of different relationships uh in buddhist tradition um on a very basic level it's just the buddha saying i'm describing personality without describing as an atman right so i'm denying there's an atman there's not a unitary person that owns this and stays the same in spite of changing thoughts and emotions that's unitary and so forth um, all I found was these five heaps, right? Um, so it, it's somewhat um, 
just talking from the standpoint of the individual person um, in a very, very concrete way, actually, right? Um, and some traditions see like the, the skandhas is just kind of neutral. Um, yeah, but some some traditions a little bit more on the Theravada side see like the skandhas as like inherently tainted, you know. So there's there's some debate, you know, do you have to transcend the skandhas or something like that? Um, and in any case, uh, all the schools generally say the um, the sense of uh, Atman, the sense of misperceived self, is um, uh, imputed on the skandhas, or somehow the skandhas are taken to be a self, an Atman. Um, but still, it seems uh, uh, it's a relatively individualized person concept, right? But when we're moving into the Buddha families, um, they're a little bit more transpersonal, interpersonal, uh, because the Buddhas and are trying to talk about how there's a sense of uh, real interdependence and connection, not just your own, you know, connection with yourself, with your own person. And that's our big problem, isn't it? Is that, you know, even kind of we go, well, okay, I'm meditating a lot and trying to get my own act together. But then I also, you know, how am I supposed to be with others? So there's always that journey back and forth between what we think is uh, our individual stuff we got to work on, and then the um, the group thing, right? The community thing. So the Buddha family thing, from my point of view, is uh, an attempt to kind of bridge that gap. So um, it should be good news for all of us that have some social anxiety, you know, like <laughs> you know, you go into a group go into a party or a meeting and you go, oh, okay, um, you know, how do I fit in or who am I supposed to be right now, right? It shifts, doesn't it? You know, I think it does, you know? If you're just quietly sitting in your office and you'd be thinking, well, that's me sitting in my office. And then, then you have to go, like with me, you know, some Thursdays I go and then consult group with another bunch of therapists and then I have a slight, this, uh, well, okay, who, you know, I got to move out of just my personal world, right? And, got to, and then I'm in a group world. And um, that transition sometimes is stressful. Um, so the Buddha families is kind of a, a, a bridge thing. Maybe that's more than you wanted to know. But... <laughs> we We have to be able to, from our Vajatantrika point of view, we, we want to be able to have some uh, freedom and fluidity to move back and forth between different paradigms so that we can be, um, you know, kind of social and um, look at uh, so-called outside problems uh, without forgetting our inner world. And we can be in our inner world without, um, you know, forgetting outside problems, right? Um, so we we try to do that by saying we're not on either side, we're in the middle, which is um, the safest, most powerful place to be, but also difficult to have that mental experience. And once again, I would say that's you know that's the um, the experience we want. You know, in the Buddha Dharma program. We're reading um, a nice collection called Harmony of Views, where. Um, uh, the, there's a poem, kind of poem treatise from um, uh, Galuk Yogi. Then there's one uh, from uh, Mahamuda Kargu style, uh, Nyingma style, I mean. And then, then there's uh, Trung Purimshe's poem. And it's really interesting to see um, little different presentations. Of course, with all of it, you know, how do we... Uh, we have these different trainings, whether you call it the great Majimaka, Mahamudra, Ozogchen, the wonderful teachers that I've studied with have said, you know, these are all going in the same direction, but they might have slightly different um, emphasis. You know, please study them all recently. And um, one of the books that I, I constantly reread, um, which is small, um, maybe Dirk knows that, uh, 
translations called um, uh, Councils from My Heart. Did you remember Shay's book? But yeah, so <laughs> these short, little short talks that, and then uh, how he eloquently, you know, presents a meme or non-sectarian view like that. So that's what we're working on here. But it's difficult, right? It's difficult to fluidly move between personal and group experience, right? I don't know, maybe you guys, maybe it's easy for you guys. No. So I think you were anticipating my question. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask exactly that is what should we be reading to get more akin, more uh, knowledge base in the, in the Buddha families? Cause it sounds like it's, you know, multifaceted and multi-leveled and then there's all some ways in which they are interconnected. So I think about like, you know, ways that I think where, how can I remember this? It's like maybe the palm of the hand is the Vajrasafa and then the five fingers each can represent, you know, so yeah, ways to, yes. you know, think uh -huh. about a reference point so I can recall it and, and have it at my fingertips. But it sounds like I'm also needing to gain knowledge to then build up to also, you know, the five heaps and, and how do those inter, you know, interconnect. So I'm just curious about what I should be using my time to read to get more akin on this? So that's a really good question. There's a lot of um, now, you know, kind of stuff that focuses uh, and charts and things like that, which can be useful from kind of a, a techie kind of map point of view. But I'm trying to also, you know, present the, the living experience of why, what what is it? Why why are we using these you know terminology and metaphors? Is and just to have like geeky data about different stuff? Yeah, so you know maybe um, you know I can put out a short little um, my book's coming out soon, so we can't add it to that book, but um, you know a little bit of pamphlet or something about it because um, I um, a little bit uh, it. it the literature that's on the internet or even from, you know, wonderful teachers like Trung Perm Shea is, um, it sounds a little bit like it's it's a little stiff uh, or astrology-like, you know, Rodna people are like this. And if you're a Rodna, you, you know, you like peaches, you know, I mean, it's a little bit like that, <laughs> um, which, which, you know, has some Bingley and some like Arena Rockwell from, um, Boulder wrote a thing on, you know, it's a dance person on, you know, how to how to arrange your house according to the five Buddha families, you know, stuff like that, which is totally cool. But um, I want people to, you know, get the the practice realization part of out of it with the uh, oral instruction. So maybe write something up. Um, but uh, you know, we are we we are a family of energies, right? We're not that we we are more we are and from Buddhist point of view not a unitary self. We we have um, uh, we don't use this ter terminology in Dharma, but we could say we 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 have a lot of sub selves. Definitely, um, the idea in Dharma is that there has doesn't have to be a centralized coordinating. Um, uh, th there's no central operational system. It's Kind of convinced from what people are finding in, in a lot of brain work neurology now, like the brain doesn't have totally centralized anything and, and it's not quite as compartmentalized into like right and left brain, you know, it is very um, organized in a um, uh, self regulating way. Um, so it's our attempt to talk about a system that's self regulating and alive, but it still gets confused without um, uh, postulating a, um, a central figure. That's always the Buddhist problem, you know, how to how to talk about continuity and change if you're not postulating um, a being that goes, that guarantees continuity, if you're not postulating a self or being that um, is growing. You know, that's, it's a tough one, you know, like, so we, we come up with these systems from skandhas to families to devas and stuff to try to talk experientially about it but that's what what we want is we want to have 
um, some kind of ability to to move um, around the family table so that we feel connected, but we can also be free at the same time. Like we can get up from the table, right? Anybody grow up in a family where you couldn't leave the table until everyone was done? <laughs> yeah. So th that's kind of tight, right? You know, um, so uh, we're not a cult, you know, in that way. So people can say, may I be excused? But it's nice to be polite, right? Instead of just slamming your napkin down and leaving, you know, but like that. So anybody else? That was, I hope that's helpful. Yeah, we'll put something together because as usual, I'm not totally satisfied with what's out there because it, um, just one other thing is that, of course, uh, some of us are doing what's called six session guru yoga, which is um, something that's, um, uh, well, guru yoga is with all the schools, but this particular six session guru yoga is um, really specialized in Gelug tradition, Gandan tradition. And um, the, the idea is that we're, um, the expanded quality of it is we're remembering to do all the activities of the Buddha families, right? So it's not just like, yeah, I'm a Ratna, so I feel confident, or yeah, I'm this. So I'm, you know, it, it's always the emphasis is on activities. So, you know, you'd be giving Dharma teachings or helping out, you'd be offering compassion, you'd be, so each of the Buddha families uh, has a particular kind of pledge that goes with it. So that's a big part of my practice. So it isn't just like saying, yeah, I'm a Padma. It's great being a Padma, you know. No, sorry. <laughs> great. You know, no, it, it it also has a certain activity and we make samayas or pledges to um, uh, fulfill those promises we make to Amitabha or promises we make to um, Ratnas and Bhava or something like that. It's good to remember because I kind of go through them and then I go, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do any of that all week. <laughs> I'm really good with some things like, good morning, you know, but sometimes like we're just around people and, you know, maybe if we're forgetful, you know, um, we don't lead with, or remember at some point in the day to say, I love you, or, uh, you know, I care about you. You know, we're just being very karma about it. Like, um, did you get to the store? <laughs> like that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll put that together. Mm. It's all good. Yeah. This is huge. It's big practice piece, you know, so... Um, it's, uh, of course, Lama Tsongkhapa uh, wrote a big commentary on Guru Samaja, which is um, very dense. The difficult thing about reading Tsongkhapa, just a little aside, is that um, uh, at the same time, he's kind of giving his opinion or his wisdom about, you know, uh, uh, Dharma. He's also, you know, referencing a lot of other people and criticizing other people too. So you got three things going on. So this is why, you know, generally I don't tell people like to read the really denser stuff um, uh, because there's his kind of, this is what I think you should be doing, but then he'll jump to this is what so and so said, and then this is what I don't think is the right way to do it, although kind of okay, you know, so it, it, it moves around in this kind of debate commentary style, which is very Indian Tibetan, um, but um, it's, it's difficult to read. It's, it's a little bit like studying with Robert Nakashima, the, my Tai Chi person that I mentioned a lot, because so Robert will, uh, start showing you a form and then he goes, well, this is this, but I don't do that anymore. Or now I do it this way. And you go, well, wait a minute, you've been teaching us for the last year to do it this way. And now you're saying you learned some more and you're not doing it this way. Or this is how this teacher does it. You know, so it's it's kind of geek talk. It's in-house kind of geek talk. 
um because then you know all the players so you you would know who someone's referring to but most people don't you know so some cup of examples like referencing all these people and texts and having this inner debate so you really need a comment which is the way it works in the monastery you need a commentary to read his commentary right and you probably need a commentary to read the uh, 17th century commentary of his or you know, 14th century commentary you know so and then eventually you need um you know somebody to um you know living to do it that's why you know our present day teachers that can you know just give it you know practical is important and that's why sometimes i don't say well just go out and read this huge tome like if you want to do kala chakra and you know i could say well just read the stainless light get back to me but you you just get lost in the um totally lost in the i call it the geekness you know and like, do I really have to know all 700 and something devas? You know, do I have to know Kala Chakra astrology? Is it, you know, what do you, you know, something like that. Thank you. Does that mean we're done? That just means thanks. I think we're done, though, don't you? Hello. Thank you for tuning in from Portugal and uh, Pennsylvania. Um, Thank you, Lama. People from Oklahoma were on or not. Um, we're, we're not going to do Kala Chakra today because I need to meet with people. So um, we'll pick it up next time. So like that. The only, the, 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 the important family thing, I'll just add a little bit, is that uh, the tongue is you, you just have to show up, you see. You can't, you know, somebody, if you say, I want to meet your family, at some point, we're always interested in someone's family a little bit, then we're not satisfied with them just saying, we're all my mom's like this, or my cousin's like this, or auntie's like this. We want to meet them, right? So there's no way to explain the Buddha families except by doing it. It has to be a performance, you know, at some point, we can't just say, well, I'm, you know, you you can't say about the whole family, you get so big, you can't like just make it into one little thing. Yeah, so that's why it, Vajrayana feels kind of big because um, it's like going to someone's, it's like going to your own family reunion. Anybody goes to family reunions here? Yeah, a bit. At least I'm used to that because um, our family, old style East Coast, we actually own huge properties in Canada, and we have a our own family house where people are supposed to go and meet meet each other all the time. And sometimes I can afford to go, and then you're meeting like third cousins once removed, but they're family, right? Interesting. Okay, let's do prayers. Dedication. To the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain a state of Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel Bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezi, Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the holders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness. May they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Losong, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Osandrapa, I may request at your holy feet. We can. Thank you so much, Lama. I just I wanted to mention that this Wednesday in the meditation class at six o'clock in the Gampa, I'm going to be doing the sound meditation. 
and um, I won't be at the temple for a few weeks. I'm be unable to be here, so I wanted to do something special. So if um, you like to hear how we work with sound and bowls in meditation this Wednesday at uh, 6 o'clock. Thank you. Any other? Uh, this is a uh, announcement, especially for anyone who's a relative newcomer. Um, every every Sunday on the alternate week, the Lama is not teaching. We have our uh, men's group, otherwise known as the Dharma Dudes, and uh, so that would be next Sunday. Um, I will not actually be there. I'm going to be at a tantra retreat, but um, Bill has offered to help out and um, some of the other guys, and that's wonderful that. Uh, it's becoming this aggregate where we can just get together and hang out and talk about the Dharma and how we relate to it. Um, and since it's around lunchtime, it's nice if you want to bring something to share. So um, next Sunday. Thanks. I think that's all for announcements. <laughs>